In the first section of this course, we're going to hold off on the specifics of React Native and look at the React library concepts in general. Now, I realize that many of you probably have worked with React.js, and that's fine. This will actually be a good refresher and get your mind prepped for React Native. But for those of you that don't really know too much about React.js, this is going to help you wrap your head around how it works. So what is React? It's an open source declarative JavaScript library for creating dynamic user interfaces inside of a web browser. React was created by and is maintained by Facebook, Instagram, and a community of individual developers. Uh, it was deployed on Facebook's newsfeed back in 2011, and then it was open sourced and released to the public in 2013. So React works in the view layer of an application. Its sole purpose in life is to create user interfaces, the part of an application that the user sees and interacts with. Um, it's often defined as the V in MVC. And for those of you that don't know what MVC is, it stands for Model View Controller. Okay, it's a design pattern where the controller takes care of things like traffic, uh, routing, loading models, things like that. Uh, a model specifically works with the data in the database, and then the views take care of the user interaction and the application display. Okay, this is where React lives. Now, you can use React with many other frameworks and technologies uh, that work with databases or um, APIs, things like that, making HTTP requests, but React itself doesn't handle that stuff. So what's the purpose of React.js? Why was it created at Facebook in the first place? Well, first of all, it improves the entire process of developing a user interface. It gives us common workflow between developers and simplifies what it means to create a UI. It was also created to better performance. Uh, React uses a virtual DOM, which I'll get to in a minute. And this makes it so that we can quickly render and update parts of the application without refreshing the entire page. It also improves maintainability. Okay, so it's easy to keep track of certain elements along with their functionality. And this brings us to the next point, which is encapsulation and reusable components. So everything is broken up into components and can be reused within the application, and in some cases across multiple applications. And this is a huge advantage. Alright, so I mentioned that React uses something called a virtual DOM, and this is essentially a slimmed down version of the browser's document object model, which is a tree of elements. React can look at which parts of the DOM have changed by comparing the new version with the one that was previously stored, and it does this all behind the scenes, and whenever we update the application or the component state, it'll automatically re-render everything with the required changes. All right, and since we don't have to refresh the entire page, this makes things work very fast. So to kind of put everything together, let's take a look at the overall core concepts. So we have components which are made of JavaScript classes. Now for the most part, you want to use ECMAScript 2015, uh, which is the newer standard of JavaScript that includes classes. You can use ES5 by having your class extend react.createClass instead of react.component. Um, components can be passed properties, also called props in React, and we'll be looking at this in the next video. Everything in React is self-contained and can be influenced by user input and actions. React uses something called state where you can store different types of values. Um, you can change state values at any time, and the virtual DOM will be updated, and it'll reflect those changes. Now, in a React component, the output looks like standard HTML, but it's actually something called JSX, or JavaScript Syntax Extension. And this is an XML slash HTML-like syntax that can be used within JavaScript. Okay, there's only a, small, uh, a couple small differences, which we'll look at. Uh, a little later. And it's important to know that JSX is not required. You can use plain JavaScript, but the code does get much more difficult, and JSX is almost always recommended. And lastly, React views are declarative, which makes it uh, quite easy to debug and to test our code. 
All right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into the next video where we'll take a look at React components.